Good morning and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii in my sixth episode of Movement Matters. Movement Matters covers topics dealing with health and wellness of your body. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Christine Linders. I've been a licensed physical therapist for over 23 years in California, New York, Connecticut, and now Hawaii in a variety of settings, including sports, orthopedics, neuro, and on-site corporate wellness platforms. I'm a board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I'm certified in applied functional science, and I have my manual therapy certification. This show is designed to bring you the most cutting edge and effective treatment strategies so you can help your body perform better, decrease pain, and get back to doing the things that you love. Today, I'll focus on scoliosis, a simple and effective approach to learning to treat your curve. I began teaching to the community and physical therapists on my treatment approach to scoliosis in 2012. I presented successful case studies using my approach at Physician Rounds in New York City and prepared community education talks in Connecticut and New York. And then in 2016, I had the pleasure of instructing a two-hour educational seminar on my approach at the National Physical Therapy Association's annual special section conference. So what does scoliosis look like? Scoliosis can take on several different shapes, and here's one image of a person with scoliosis. So you can see a curve that's looking at the person from behind. Uh, and so when someone like that comes into physical therapy that has that curve, it can be for many reasons. But for the purpose of my show today, I want to explain to people that do have a curve a little bit about where they can start and what you could get from physical therapy. So what we're trying to accomplish in physical therapy is to address the signs and symptoms that you're experiencing, which are related to your curve and could be a result of some of the postural collapse and the compensations that your body has made over time. You could experience shoulder pain or shoulder blade pain, back pain, neck pain, hip pain, or more. So in image number two, we're gonna show an X-ray of Rachel. And so Rachel and I met in August and uh, she came to my house after her first physical therapy session and we were looking at her, her back. She had some gluteal pain or sciatica and we noticed that she wasn't standing quite straight. And so about a week later, she got the results of her x-ray and it showed this slight curve to the right that you can see here in the x-ray. And so in image number three, we, Rachel and I met uh, up this Sunday. In image number three, I imposed a line so that you could see the curve that's in her upper back there. It extends down to the top of her lower back. And that is something that matched her x-ray, something that we found. And if you go into image number four, you'll see in the upper photo how if you drew a line across the grass, how Rachel's left shoulder is higher than her right shoulder. That's something that we'll talk to Rachel about in a minute and something that she noticed. And in the image below, a minute later, Rachel had learned how to correct her curve. So the point in showing those photos is that there's some simple exercises that you can do if you do have scoliosis that can correct your posture and activate and turn on all those muscles that may be inhibited because of your curve. Now hers is mild and some people might have more severe curves, but the point is there's very simple things that you can do and I wanted to teach you all about that today. So now let's meet Rachel. Rachel's a volleyball coach, a beach volleyball player and fitness enthusiast who recently sought medical attention for the pain that she was experiencing in her buttock. And it, more, it was concerning her about playing volleyball. She was nervous to play. She didn't want to make it worse because it was preventing her from sleeping at night. So Rachel, thank you so much for coming on to Movement Matters. Thanks for having me, Christine. I'm so excited to be here and share this and hopefully help others who have similar issues. I know so. you will. So uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about your history with your buttock pain, back pain, anything that you were complaining of. Yeah, um, so what brought me to seek medical attention in the first place um, was this reoccurring uh, pinching deep inside my glute. And from go having it before and going to um, some like massage therapists and friends kind of describing it, that they were saying it was my piriformis muscle yep. tightening around my sciatic nerve. And in the last seven years since I lived in Hawaii, um, I've had that pain three times. This is the third episode. 
And so the first two times it was, it was painful when I would bend over, the pinching. But I think that kept me from doing everything that I would do, play volleyball, coach volleyball, um, all my activities, you know, yeah. yoga. Um, but this third time, it really uh, affected all those things I love to do. And um, was, was there something different? Did you have an yeah. injury or was well, it just a different presentation? What, it, it, it wasn't a different presentation, but the, the thing that was different this third time around was that I couldn't sleep at night. And usually before I could, I could lay flat and it would relax and I'd feel better in the morning. This time I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up in pain. So I knew something was different and it was, oh, it was something I had to seek help for. That's when you have to get help too. I mean, because yeah. sleep is when we're supposed to restore when our muscles and our bodies get to replenish themselves. And yeah. so that's usually the time when people that do have pain are able to rest the most. So right. who did you see? What did you do? So I went to my general um, doctor and I just mentioned it to her. I was actually there for another reason. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm having this pain. I can't sleep at night. It, it, I've had it before. And I said, could you please, you know, prescribe me a physical therapy? And okay. she did a quick check and she's like, yeah, it looks, sounds like sciatica. I can refer you. And so that's how I got started. And um, went to eight weeks of physical therapy and they had some great insights and told me a lot of great things. However, by the end of physical therapy, eight weeks, um, I was in more pain. I oh. had uh, numbness going down to my toes. That's not okay. Not okay. And so it just progressed and got worse. So um, did, they, did they see that you had a scoliosis or is it something they were addressing in the treatments? No, or? Um, I, no they, they kind of went off of um, verbally what I was saying about my piriformis and yeah. just previous information I had been told and I thought was my issue. Right. Um, not really thinking that I had um, spine issues. Right. Um, so I think that might have been part of the issue. Um, yeah, just addressing. So one of the things yeah. that Rachel and I have talked about that the, for the audience, uh, sciatica is a term that has been globalized to call pain, usually that's coming out of your one side of your rear end, running down your leg, a nerve irritation. And back in the day, the true sciatica was where the sciatic nerve could pierce the bottom of the piriformis muscle, which is a deep hip rotator, in, and it would aggravate the nerve and people would get pain down their legs. Someone like who was a runner that had a weak gluteus medius, which is a bigger hip muscle, that's something that could cause a sciatica but another thing that could cause this global term of sciatica, which is tending now to just mean pain that's running down your leg, which we call radiculopathy, often, more often than not, comes from your spine where the nerves are exiting the vertebrae like L4, L5 to the S1, which is the top of your sacrum, where the nerves are coming out, where that nerve's getting pinched in the L5, S1 distribution is causing your piriformis muscle or the deep gluteal muscles to tighten up because the nerve is aggravating and misfiring its messages mm -hmm. and then you get pain down your leg. So I know it's something exactly. Rachel and I talked about with the, when I first saw her a week after your PT assessment, I had looked and, and saw like a little rotation in the lumbar and was concerned. And at that time you didn't have back pain, you just had butt pain. Right. Yeah. And so we were trying to, we, I think I, I corrected the little rotation and then you went off and did your PT, I think until I saw you again in Last weekend. Last weekend. Which is crazy. <laughs> many weeks later. <laughs> yeah, many weeks, many weeks later. Two months later, mm -hmm. August, September. Yeah, a little bit more than two months later. But you are doing much better now, doing right? much better now. So, yeah. What Between you... the first time I saw you yeah. and this last weekend I saw you, I had progressed from no lower back pain or numbness in my toes to um, radiating lower back pain from the pinching in my butt. Yep. Um, and then the numbness that went down into my toes. Horrible pain when I would sit. I couldn't sit for more than 10 minutes at a time. That's awful. Um, and then finally, I, uh, after eight weeks of PT, that's where I was. It, it was the worst pain I've ever <laughs> had. I couldn't sit for 10 minutes. And then I, PT ended, my prescription had ended. So I took everything I learned from yep. everybody I've talked to, you, yep. um, physical therapist, uh, my massage therapist, yes, yes. everybody, and I just put together my own routine. That's um, fantastic. Where I just was like, okay, I feel like this is what my body needs. And I would do some really deep um, piriformis glute stretches 
and then I would do some strengthening, and then I would do some real core strengthening, and then stretching. Great. Music to um, my ears. Yeah. So, so from then on, it's taken weeks, but I feel tremendous. I, I only get the pinching when I bend over now. That's I don't fantastic. have the back pain. You can sleep. I don't have. I can sleep. That's I, I don't have the ner I don't have the numbness in my toes right now. That's terrific. Um, however, I, I did go to a, another doctor and they did a nerve test and they said I, from this I have residual nerve damage down my leg. So yeah, we're, I'm gone. now going to PT for for that. Which is but, yeah, that's that's a good question. But overall, action. I feel so much better and it's it's because of all the information I've received and I've just taken it and I've I've tried to you know it's a lot of work. You know, it's a daily, uh, daily effort to try and get back into health. It is, know? and I'm thanks for saying that. Yeah. I think that's great, and I think uh, one of the things for people listening <clears throat> to the show that you said is so huge that our job as physical therapists and health professionals, doctors, chiropractors, massage therapists, is to give you, extend our knowledge to you because every body is every body is mm -hmm. different. And so it's good that you, you're so aware of your body, and I know you've done some Pilates training and things like mm -hmm. that, that it's great that you were able to extrapolate of all the things that you were given, some great things to do for yourself. And you also mentioned, too, that it's a kind of a daily practice. So what in that second picture that I had shown, or the third mm -hmm. or fourth, I can't remember, but the picture where you had straightened out your shoulders, mm -hmm. How long have you been working on that? Mm -hmm. How easy is that? How often do you have to do that? Is it normal now? <laughs> so <Since> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So um, I noticed that I was leaning with my left shoulder up. Um, it was probably about nine months ago now, and I, it was okay. when I was in um, practicing Pilates. And, uh, yep, my and you're looking at your alignment, yep, right? you, Exactly. Yep. Pilates is all about alignment, realigning, Love and re, um, redistributing your strength, right? And so um, I noticed that uh, back then, and we were like, oh, that's kind of weird. And I, I never noticed it before. And I was like, huh. And so I, I just noticed, and I, and I tilt the shoulder down. I engage my lat here. Absolutely. And I just try and stay, come back into realignment, even though it feels unaligned right but I look at myself in the mirror or you know yep. and here I am but it, it's a constant reminder because it doesn't feel normal yeah. and so I have to remember or realize when I get comfortable again am I aligned no but it's starting it's starting, starting to, feel, to feel normal I think because I've been doing this for three months yeah it's been three months since three months just yeah. early August right or before <laughs> July. End of July, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's important for everyone to know too. Is the I love it when I'm helping someone that has a scoliosis or that is sitting poorly, even if they're just slouching forward yeah. in this plane. It's great when I correct them and they say, "Well, that doesn't feel normal," or "What that feels weird." Because I'm thinking, "Oh, that's great," because your nervous system, if you tend to sit like this, or if you have a scoliosis, it's something that the one we're talking about that happened during your growth spurt. So sitting like this to you feels normal, but when we correct you and we level you out, I mm -hmm. like that it feels weird because your nervous system has the normal within your curve as this. When you move straight, your nervous system feels abnormal, and now it needs to adjust to that as being your new normal. It needs to learn a new habit like we do when we brush our teeth every right. morning or I had shoulder surgery. I had to... Uh, you know, scratch my back and brush my hair and damage my gums, brushing my teeth with my left hand. That was a habit that even to this day, I'm not as good at, but I was able to do it. And so you're developing a new habit and your nervous system is now saying that straight. And you do think about it daily and yeah. probably multiple and times a day. And I think it's a good point that you made is um, some of, a lot of us are, are hunched over every day. And it was more of an awareness of everything about my alignment. And it wasn't just the scoliosis or just the, the tilt. Yeah. Um, I did have, you know, tendency to do this as well. So just bringing awareness to my overall body alignment Fantastic. to bring everything up tall and straight and holding in with my um, anatomic girl, you yeah, know, right. my <laughs> abdominal girl, you know, um, okay. and just it, it's but it's a daily thing. I have to remind myself sitting in the car. Don't don't lean back in the car, right? Don't up lean straight, back. That's up straight and engage, and that's a really good uh, time for me to practice my 
my posture. That's fantastic. So, yeah. so we're going to go to a very brief break. This is Movement Matters, Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. We're back, we're live. This is Movement Matters, and I'm speaking with Rachel Sherman, who is a volleyball coach and beach volleyball player who happens to have scoliosis. And we were just talking about how Rachel has been practicing on her own how she sits in her car to realign her curve and fire the proper muscles so she can feel better. So, Rachel, tell us a little bit more about uh, you realigning your body coming out of your curve. Is there other times of the day besides sitting or standing that you notice that you're off that you have to now think about to fix? Yeah, so, so um, I, I now know when I'm sitting, I can recorrect. When I'm standing, I recorrect. Um, but what's kind of funny is sometimes I go uh, salsa dancing uh, with I my love sister. Salsa dancing. It's so much fun, and, and it relaxes you, and it's, it's such a good time. It's a core workout, right? It's a core All workout. <laughs> yes, um, but it's funny. I go with my sister, and we talk about you know this stuff, and she says, "Oh my gosh, Rachel, when you dance, it's so prominent that oh, your shoulder too. drops, and that that you look." She said, "You look so crooked," <laughs> and and it makes sense though because. You know, when you're dancing, you're thinking about the, the dance moves and the feet, you know, uh, steps. Um, I'm not thinking about recorrecting. So maybe that's like the next step is to try and yeah. bring that correction. But I want it to be natural. And I think it's getting there. But It's getting natural. And I, <laughs> that just reminded me now, too, because we were at the park on Sunday. And you had mentioned now how you, when you do sit-ups, you, you change your position too, even before doing sit-ups. And yeah. I think that's awesome. And I mentioned how I have a, a mild scoliosis. It's, uh, I don't know if it's undiagnosed or, or, or whatever. I have it in my family. And I don't think I really noticed it until after I had had a couple surgeries on my left shoulder. And I thought that's why my shoulder blade was weak, because that happens sometimes mm -hmm. after a major reconstruction. But my mom said... I think I remember you always, one of my problems is my shoulder blade sticks in the chair. And one, she goes, I think you always did that. You always fidgeted and like, you always moving the one arm around because your shoulder blade kind of stuck out. And that's something that can happen on the side that the, the spine rotates towards because it pushes the ribs out of the way. Yeah. And so I think I mentioned to you how look at my ribs, like when I was laying down, I was noticing that I was off, so I would correct my ribs and then do sit-ups, and it felt so much better on the back problem that I had had. And immediately, I felt like it loosened up. So I was pretty psyched when you mentioned all on your own, hey, let me fix it when I'm laying down and, and exercise and strengthening my body. Right. Alignment, Pilates, biomechanical, I'm super big into aligning things, getting as close to normal that you can, because I think right. things work better there, right? Yeah, and it was when I started practicing Pilates that um, really paying attention to my alignment came into full play, like in a daily life, my li lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting, though, because um, I, I sort of kind of, when you found the scoliosis, I was like, I thought I had that because yeah. way back in the day, you know, when you're a kid in, in school, they yeah. do those scoliosis tests where they make you bend over. Yep. And I thought I remembered way back then that someone once said that I had it, and yeah. but we never did anything. And it's small. I, because it was slight, they made too. it like it was not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, however, now, you know, how active I am and 
just the re rep repetitive motions that we get into in habits, it's definitely come out um, in this lean. And yes. now that I have to, to be aware of and correct, so I, I hope that like people can become aware earlier I, and understand earlier that that's alignment why we're is so here important. Today, yeah. yeah, it's it's great. It's uh, my friend Marissa. She teaches a Schroth method in, um, in New Jersey. And we did a talk together, I forgot to mention that in my credentials, but uh, we did a talk together, Schroth, and then my biomechanical approach to scoliosis, which mine is very similar since researching. Now there's an Italian technique, S-E-A-S, which is like scoliosis exercise specific things. It's having good results. We did a talk together to show how Schroth would treat someone and then how I treated someone. Mm -hmm. And then what the person looked like afterward which was fantastic. Yeah, and you gave me some great exercises that yeah. I did on my own at home, like the strengthening twist and stretch. Oh, yes, stretch. yes. Yeah. That's great. And so in image five, <laughs> I, I show a picture of someone doing exercises that we gave to Rachel back in August when I first saw her. This is opposite of her curve. So if you're trying to uh, look at her x-ray and rewind and see, this is opposite because this was, uh, I took this from my PowerPoint presentation. But one of the things that you want to do is the scoliosis takes on a three-dimensional curve. So you have rotation, which is left to right. You have side bending, which is left to right, but leaning left to right. And then you have bending forward, backward, like slouching forward and bending backward. And so one of the things I do with my patient is I start to break down, okay, we need to get you derotating. So in the slide on the left, you'll see the model rotating back. And that's to get the ribs out of the way to stretch it, out of the curve to help the body rotate away from the curve. It's important to do a lot of breathing when you're doing the rotation like that to open up the rib cage because on that inside of the curve, they call it the concavity, the ribs are closer together. So you want to expand those intercostal muscles that live between the ribs and breathe. You can do it as a stretch and hold in a position and breathe, or you can go backward and forward like a bow and arrow while you breathe. That gets a little bit more of muscle activation into it. And then in the picture on the right, where you see the model leaning over, that's a spine corrector uh, apparatus. You can use a foam roll, you can roll a pillow. You put it at the, the peak of the upper back curve, the thoracic curve, usually it's the upper, upper curve in most people. You put it right at the peak of that, open up your rib cage, put your arm over the side and breathe and really expand. Now that takes care of the side bending component. So, when I'm first working with my patients with scoliosis, I will break it down in the rotation, the side bend. Once they learn that, once they're getting stretched out, then I say, okay, now let's do rotation and side bend. Okay, now let's do rotation, side bend, and flexion and extension. So we get the three-dimensional nature of the curve. And so I think I gave you the bow and arrow mm -hmm. and the stretch. So we right, got the yeah. rotation and the side bend. And you were already working on your flexion extension, your mm -hmm. posture, getting yeah, that exactly. third component. I'm not I'm so, leaning forward to just sitting straight. I, lo I love yeah. that you're doing all these things, and mm -hmm. even more so, of course, that you're doing better. getting better <laughs> because I can't wait to play beach volleyball with you. Um, in image six, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I've been waiting. Image six, six shows Rachel bending forward. And so this is why probably nothing was done with her when she was younger, because I drew a little arrow there. That's where you can see a little bit of a rib hump, but it's so small. And mine looks exactly the same as hers because no one even noticed mine when I was in high school because it's so small and usually under 10 degrees, it's very hard to see it with the naked eye. And I have seen curves like Rachel and mine that is maybe eight degrees. I, then they, people have had x-rays and said, oh, that's an eight degree curve. They measure that a specific way, but it's very hard to see. And I think in a kid, it's probably almost impossible to see, but in an adult, we've compensated a little bit and probably leaned into our curve a little bit not knowing. And so now yeah. it's, it, we're able to see it yeah. with the naked eye, even though the curve angle may be 8 to 10 degrees. And so in image 7, another thing I want to call out to people that may be difficult, unless you're seeing a physical therapist or someone that you know, is dealing with scoliosis or very good in alignment, is you need to identify your curve. So there's lots of ways to do it. There's scoliometers. There's apps on your phone. But the forward bend test is very good to see. So in the leftmost image, you'll see I put little stickers right up and down the center of the spine, and you can see a slight fullness on the right. She has a, a lower curve. It's like just sort of right at the bottom of her thoracic spine or middle back that extends down into her lower back. And in the middle picture, you can see another way to identify the curve, 
because the curves will bend one way and turn the other. If you look at the center position, you can see the skin fold on the left. Her waist is more defined on the left, indicating that the curve is bending to the left. And then you see the fullness in her right lower back in the middle picture. It's indicating that she has that rotation. Her spine is turning to the right. And so now in the drawing on the right, that's her curve. It's so small, it's so slight that you almost would never notice it unless you were really looking. But she came to me, we met before I did my talk. She'd had back pain for such a long period of time. I think she was maybe 40, 42 at the time and was riding at a bus and was noticing that her back hurt all the time. And so in the next picture, image number eight, we did that same day. I loosened up the muscles on her concave side, the side that it's bending towards. And then I gave her some stretches where I had her get down, lean to the right. That's the side bending component, the picture on the left, where she's leaning to the right to stretch out the left side, doing some breathing, opening up that side. And then I also gave her on the picture on the right, a more functional lunge stretch where she can lunge and lean to the right. And lunging and leaning to the right created a little bit of the rotation component, but that was our first session. So I wanted to be able to show her what she could do right now to feel better. And two days later, she sent me a message and said, I woke up without my back hurting and I've never felt so good. I, I couldn't believe how quickly it happened, but her curve is so small and her only complaint was back pain. I hadn't progressed because sometimes they don't. That stretch worked really great for her. And so some of your things, like the things that you're inherently doing, straightening your body out is, is great. And I'm glad that everyone can see that it's something so small that can yeah. make such a difference. And it's awesome that she, all she had to do was this couple exercises. I think for me, it's progressed quite a bit because of my level of activity. Um, and it's just, you know, really pounded it into that muscle memory in the, in the wrong way. And so it's taking a lot of effort, a daily effort and, and energy yeah. and thought process to get back to normal. But I think once you do, it, it still is a daily effort. But just to remember, stay aligned. You stay know? aligned. Stay aligned, stay tall, stay, you know, keep your scaffolding intact, you know. I like that, the scaffolding. Yeah. So, you're, you know, your shoulders stack on your hips. And, and yeah. while you're keeping your scaffolding aligned, to point out from last show about mindfulness meditation, how important it is to calm your mind to get the best sleep, calm your mind when you are in pain so that you're not over firing that, do your deep breathing, clear your mind before sleep. So if you didn't get to see two weeks ago, check out the mindfulness meditation. And in image 10, everybody take a look at that and just relax and enjoy just unwinding your brain. This is Movement Matters. I have Rachel Sherman, who spoke with me today about scoliosis. I wanna thank Think Tech Hawaii and all of our donors for having us on today. And thank you for joining us. Tune in next week for part two, two weeks for part two on scoliosis. Aloha.